Good morning, I'm Brian Reagan. This is Tyler Kelly. And today we're in 2 Kings 4. This is the life of Elisha. Elijah is 1 Kings. Elisha is 2 Kings. One was the first prophet. The other was the second prophet who did twice as much and twice as, as, as cool a stuff as the first guy. Okay? So if you're ever trying to keep them straight, just first Kings, second Kings. The second guy doubles everything the first guy did. That's why he's got second Kings. Okay. And uh, we're in second Kings four, one through seven, Tyler. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha saying, your servant, my husband is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, your maid servant has nothing in the house, but a jar of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another vessel, so the oil ceased. Right through seven. Oh, and then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons should live on the rest. All right. So we don't know why, as a prophet of God, this guy uh, had debt. He, he was one of the sons of the prophets, um, which meant he was a prophet too. They had schools of prophets back then, like Elijah was the big dog. Then Elisha, and remember all those guys that were like, oh, hey, Elijah's gone, but look at Elisha. I wonder what's up with him, you know, and he takes and he, pow, smacks the river, and, and they're like, whoa, he's got, he's got the same kind of power Elijah did. Well, the, I mean, these guys were prophets, too. They just, you know, you got big, big prophets, then you got littler prophets, okay? Um, why this guy had debt, I'm not really sure. And, and even Elisha is like, uh, what, what shall I do for you? Now, think about that question. When the prophet of God's asking her, what is it that you want me to do? Who's really asking her? And so, well, the prophet is. Mm -hmm. For whom does the prophet speak, Tyler? Uh, God. God. When she's asking the prophet, whether she realizes it or not, she's asking God. Because the solution to the problem is a God solution. It can only be a solution from the power of God to solve a problem. And it begs the question how many times that, you know, does the does our trouble come before the Lord that the Lord's like, well, what is it you want me to do? And he said, Well, I want you to fix it. But then when you get your answer, you need to actually do it. Okay? And uh, so he tells her, go get vessels from everywhere. You've got some oil. This is the point that I've been trying to make about seed. God can't bless nothing. God can bless how much? Uh, something. A jar. Yeah, a jar. Okay. Well, I mean, it might be a jar the size of a 16-ounce water bottle. But if it's like a lot of olive oil jars that I've seen, you know, it's one of those little ones that only holds like a hundred milliliters, uh, you know, or, or, or whatever, whatever that is, like two ounces, okay? And it's got the little top. People been using those for like forever, all right? They find, they find those kind of little olive oil pour things all over, you know, from ancient times. So maybe she had two ounces. Maybe she had 16 ounces. We don't know. But what she had wasn't enough to do anything. But he says, go get vessels from everyone that will let you borrow one. And start pouring out of that. You know what this makes me think of? Also, Tyler, you know what New Testament thing this makes me think of? And no, it's not loaves and fishes. Water into wine. Oh. When did the wine cease? Probably when they quit pouring it out of the vessels and the feast was over. 
But till then, what? They had wine. Here they had oil. Bread, oil, wine. Three big themes all through the scripture. How much does it? She gets enough that she's able to pay all of their debts and she's able to provide for herself and her sons the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. That's how much financial value. Okay. God's grace. You have God's grace when you have nothing. Okay. But once you're in the covenant, If you want to be blessed, you have to give him something to bless. That's why Jesus, this is one of those things that it's also an example of uh, the rich young ruler. Go sell everything that you have, then give those proceeds to the poor, then come follow me, and you shall have treasure in heaven. And everybody, See, you get treasure in heaven. No, he left. Quit ending the story where the dude left. Finish the story when the rest of the apostles freaked out. When Jesus says rich people, you know, they're, they're going to have a hard time. They're like, then who can be saved? Why? Because the apostles were all rich. And Jesus said, and then Peter's like, hey, we gave up stuff for you. And Jesus goes, yeah. And for everyone who gives up stuff for me, sows it into the kingdom of heaven in this life they shall receive a hundredfold and in the life to come eternal life but it's going to come with persecutions okay you don't have to have the hundredfold but if you want the hundredfold it's going to come with persecution so again supernatural provision other thoughts Tyler? No sir. With Adam Brian Reagan this is Tyler Kelly. We bid you good day and uh, we invite you to come back tonight for our our Thanksgiving Eve uh, song, prayer, and uh, uh, scripture service. It's just going to be a night of, of praise to the Lord and meditating on his word. See you then.